what happened is that we're f at w as soon as you fix your interest, my thinking process is fixed, determined by the position of the object in front of the proposed interest. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Because if I do not get out of the interest on the recorder, because if not, I take my interest out of the recorder and then I start talking about the, the lighter. What is that? Then there's not a very coherent thinking. Yeah? And I can only talk about coherent think thinking in the measure that I am able to fix my interest. And when I fix my interest, that interest is determined by the object in which I am fixing my interest. Clear? Yeah. But I love the thing of the uh -huh. determination of the thinking. But if if you if we do not determine that, we don't understand. You know. So it has its thing. Then is a determination of the thinking in first in the first. Uh, first, is there is a determination of the thinking, because the object yeah, is fixed in that ambit of the thinking process, and it itself will dictate the operations of the thinking. And on this, and secondly, is a determination because the operations, yeah, themselves, the operations that the thinking does must be referred to the object and not to anything else. Mm -hmm. Wow. All of this is a method, mm -hmm. but it's a completely different approach yeah, through the thinking process. Okay, that last section I need you to go read again. That's so he, he's saying that determination has, it's determined in two ways. The, so the, we're the, talking about point the, of interest, first of all, right? The object right, of the, interest. The, right, he's talking about the, the interest. Yeah. Right? The, the, the thinking process is determined in two ways, yeah? Because the object, yeah, is determined in the ambit of the thinking, yeah? That's the first one. And it dictates all the operations and you will pay attention, they will discover things, you will, whatever. You're gonna do things with your thinking process referred to the, whatever, the tape recorder. And then in the second, the second determinism or determination, I don't know how you say it in English, yeah, is because the operations that you realize with that thinking can be referred only to the object itself and not to something else. Yeah. Okay. So that's so why you I talked determine. about the dials and the meter. And yes. Yeah. So determine because the an environment, the ambit, and because of the object itself. Mm -hmm. This is kind of two levels. There is determination because the object imposes it, and there is determination because the consciousness plays in such a way that there is determination in two different me means at least. That is the degree of determination of the thinking process that are that you put limits. I don't know how to. Let me see. This is a, the degree of determination of the thinking that also plays limits because there are because there is determination of the thinking, then we have limits. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the minute that the consciousness is determined, then we can see the limits. Then, then there is relationships. Then you fix the environment or ambits in which. Uh, could be or not be explicitly manifested, and it, it is thanks to the determination of the thinking in relationship to the recorder that a lot of ambits are determined at the same time. And this is the limit of the recorder, and there is no more beyond that. And that, in such a way that my Within those limits, my thinking process will work now. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. There are characters in these objects, characters that are 
appealing for the thinking process that are explicit or what is it that I see here that there is a an amount of implicit characters that are not uh, obvious with all their presence in front of my my perception but nevertheless my interest on the recorder uh, it's looking for them it's oriented and it will try to investigate and try to interpret these implicit characters placed on the object that has determined my interest so if I open the recorder and I start looking at all the internal system and then I go discovering an, a several characteristics in, that are not explicit and in the object that determine my interest upon it and I will distinguish then between the interest that I am having and is determining my thinking the fact that for because I fix my interest in the thinking I will establish limits and within those limits of the thinking I will be able to separate explicit characters and also implicit which they are referred to my operations and is that simple for him because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't Okay, he says, interests and environment are proper of the abstraction of the thinking in front of the mobility phenomena consciousness. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to do it again, right? Sure. Or maybe we can talk and see what we understand, because I'm not sure about this one. In one hand is the interest, and then is the environment in which the object is exists. Both of them are proper of the abstraction of the thinking process in front of the mobility phenomenon consciousness. Mm -hmm. If this aptitude it, yeah, go ahead. Well, he's sort of this is a I think a almost like a phenomenology technique is he's exactly. standing aside from what is happening to describe it mm -hmm. that that's what he's trying to do in this or that's what he is right. doing in this section and yeah I think you're right the says is is this app is the if if this uh, aptitude this capability to refer to objects with interest and to be able to fix environments in which uh, the objects exist. Yeah? If we didn't have this capability and we were not able to do this, all of this, yeah? and we will not be able to have thinking process. We will not be able to think and even less coherently. Mm -hmm. So the attitude to be able to refer to an object, put an interest, fix the environment, that's the limits of the object, so you don't confuse them, and you don't get out of that. If you don't have all of that, you will not be able to think, you will not be able to even consider a coherent thinking. Um, if we thought of it as hitting the pause button while watching a movie mm -hmm. and then you start describing or talking about that scene you know right um, and and he's saying uh, the thinking process is our ability to do all that exactly right right yeah yes it's so he's describing that putting it on hold because the other part of it is He's trying to describe something that he's involved in, that he's in already. Right. It's not like all that's over there and I'm here. He's trying to describe what he's doing, what he's involved in also. Yes. And the only way he can do that effectively is 
my analogy is you hit the pause button you have of the movie and mm -hmm. you say, okay, let's take a minute just to see where we're at and talk right. about all this right now. It's pretty much what he's doing, right. Then he goes okay, on. Okay, so if the pause button, if the movie is about us here doing this, mm -hmm. And the pause button is stops the thing so we can come back and reflect on mm -hmm. yes. what's just been said. We can look at him talk about what's just passed by us in this mm -hmm. movie that we're in. Yes, I mean, in reality, you can't. Life is moving on, but yeah. it, it's a way to. So you uh, can, in a way, because you go to another form of thinking. You go to abstract. Yeah. You well, abstract uh, everything that's happened. Right. You are doing that all the time, apparently. Uh -huh. But when you fix an interest on an object, you condition, you put, you see, you, you, the free, how I can say this? You determine your thinking by fixing it on an object. But it's absolutely necessary in order to really understand the object correctly. Because the consciousness will structure regardless, even if you're not paying any attention, if you have no interest. Yeah? But in order to think coherently, you have to, at one point, fix the interest and go deeper into the object and, and, and do all the, the operations necessary to comprehend that better. Mm -hmm. And then your thinking becomes more coherent, you say. Mm -hmm. But then what the the part that I don't know is hard to well it's not hard, but that I'm trying to say that you can also think incoherently. Yeah. That I am not sure how it he he's saying he, it's, it's the next thing. Let let me read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are forms. There are forms in the incoherent thinking in which the limits between the objects disappear, mm -hmm. in which the interests fluctu fluctuate so badly that you do not know what you're thinking about. Yeah? But this type of thinking is not interest for us, and that's why we don't even call it thinking. Yeah? Who knows what it is? Association. <laughs> I don't know. So when we talk about thinking, we talk about a system of operations that are coherent. We talk about a system of operations that even though are different according to the objects to, to which they are referred, they have the permanence. Even when it's mobile in its representation allows us to clarify laws and constants even though they're variable, and even though they're particular cases in which the, the, the thinking process orient itself. Clear? That's the muddy waters of red law. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, he's saying that when we talk about thinking and coherent thinking, or operations that are coherent, when the, when the system of operations, even though there, you know, there is a lot of mobility in, with the uh, with the object itself, with the interest and all of that. Uh -huh. yeah. We are still able to establish laws, parameters, and constant, even though these things are dynamic. Yeah. So we we do not stop the process, but the pause allows us to establish relationship as well. Mm -hmm. Ken was saying, mm -hmm. yeah, and that is coherent thinking. Yeah? 